Okay, stand for a second, learn the script. Let the white balance figure itself out. Hate leaving it on auto, but I genuinely don't know what I'm doing there. I'm starting to become disillusioned with the term remastered these days. Pretty strange for a term that doesn't have any defined meaning when applied to video games, but there you go, I am strange. I always thought remastered meant an extra bit of effort had gone into the release. Fancier graphics, remixed audio, that kind of thing. Not just, we made it work on modern machines. We need a better term for that, incidentally. Released on GOG.com just sounds awkward. And it doesn't apply to Dungeon Keeper 2, because that was buggered when they first put it out. There's actually three terms I want to talk about. Remaster, Remake and Reboot. All of these have been used at various points in games history, but much like shoe sizes or literally everything that Peter Molyneux says, it doesn't always mean the same thing to every person. But I'll tell you what they mean, or at least what they mean to me, what I think they should mean. And I don't know, I don't control your brain. So Remaster is up first, and I feel this is the one that is the most abused. What actually got me writing this was the release of Fahrenheit Indigo Prophecy Remastered. For starters, it's weird that they took the names used in both regions and just slammed them together, especially considering one of those titles was named by David Cage as fucking stupid. Worked for XCOM Enemy Unknown, but that was a mashup rather than just taking the two names and plonking them together. Anyway, what irks me is the fact that this is called Remastered when it has no more effort put into it than anything GOG ever does for their releases. Still, seems like they've made widescreen an option, and for the effort that's been put in, £6.99 is not a hell of an asking price. The non-widescreen version is on GOG for half that, by the way. Now, we'll switch over to something which I feel does deserve the remastered moniker. Grim Fandango Remastered features the same old blocky textures and low resolution as the original game. Until you start turning all the options on, like advanced lighting, shadows, higher resolution, updated texture. They even added developer commentary and the option for a point-and-click interface over the original tank controls. Lots of extra wee shiny things to make your extra money worth it. There's more effort put in here than simply making it work. The challenge of doing a proper remaster is having to go back to the old source code and assets, if you still have them, and even if you do, that's no guarantee of success. The Silent Hill HD collection was notorious for its bugs and changes, rumoured to be attributed to copyright issues with the actress who did the motion capture and voice work, but it was blatantly stated that the team had an older, buggier version of the source code than what was used in the final release. You then have to make that code run on hardware for which it was never designed, whether that's a modern graphics card or a completely different console architecture. And that's assuming the code was decently written in the first place. If you're only going to look at this thing once and never again, there's a temptation to use any sneaky hack you can do just to get the damn thing working. Then someone, maybe the person who wrote it, maybe somebody else entirely, probably someone else entirely, has to dig into that code, figure out how the hell it's doing what it's doing, before they can make any kind of change without completely breaking it. This is probably why I got taught the following rule in my first year of university. Always write your code as if the person that will be passed on to is an angry axe murderer who knows where you live. And then there's the assets, textures, 3D models, full motion video. This is where Grim Fandango Remastered falls over a bit, because the only thing they could reasonably do to the backgrounds in the full motion video was upscale them. Turns out if you make a blocky thing bigger, all you get is bigger blocks. Even if they'd had a full set of the original assets, the programs used to make them are by now at least 17 years old meaning that you probably can't get them anymore, and even if you can, you probably can't run the damn things. These days, software can go out of date in six months, never mind 17 bloody years. So I'm not surprised they took the upscale route. It didn't make sense to remake all of these assets or try and convert them, because there wouldn't even be any guarantee it would look like the original. Sure, it might be shinier, but if it doesn't evoke the same feel, what's the point? It's this kind of fiddly trouble that can lead a company to simply remake rather than remaster. That means in my mind they're redoing everything, possibly to the point where it looks like a completely different game on first glance. Conveniently, the GameCube version of Resident Evil fits this description nicely. New graphics, updated controls, altered mansion layout, new voice acting, even a new script. Project director Shinji Mikami was quoted as saying the remake is 70% different from the original. You end up with something that's familiar and recognisable when you start playing, but brings in all the advantages that modern hardware can offer. Plus a remake has a bit more leeway to actually change some of the content, layouts, control schemes, extra content added in, that sort of thing. Something like a remaster is far more expected to toe the line. It's the game as you recognise it, just running a little bit better, not looking completely like it was a PlayStation 1 game. And the third term is Reboot. This in my mind is closer to Remake than Remaster, but it's not quite as closely tied to the source material. 
but it'll still be recognisable as a modern era game. Reboot can be a retelling of an old story, like in the case of Doom 3, all the way up to sharing nothing but a name, like with Syndicate. Either way, it generally implies that they're looking to make a franchise out of it, either making a new one or rebooting an old one. I should have probably picked examples that actually succeeded in that, shouldn't I? So that's how I define these terms. Remaster for a pretty version of an old game but still recognisable, remake for a brand new interpretation of a classic, and reboot to pretty much say, hey, remember this? This was cool. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that one of these is better than all the others, <coughs> but they all have their own reasons for existing. The Resident Evil Remake never had a PC release, Grim Fandango hasn't been available for easy purchase since the turn of the millennium, and Fahrenheit is also a game that exists. There was a reason to put out a new version of each of these games. I just wish they'd been labelled as what they really were. There's three more terms I'll just touch on quickly. Rebirth, that came to us courtesy of a System Shock 2 mod, which added some fancy new character models and started a slew of mods of other games with the same intention and usually the same goddamn subtitle. Now I really wish that HTTP had actually been released. Like I need another reason to play Deus Ex again. There's also HD Collection, which is pretty much a trademark of Sony. Generally means, got it to work, it's in at least 720p. And the last time to get lip service here is Special Edition, which is just too damn vague to mean anything, so lip service is all it's getting. Well, okay, considering the main example is The Secret of Monkey Island and that let you play the original version, maybe it should get its own category. But that's about it. With something like films, this is way easier. Your only objective is to make it look and sound less crap. Technically, games should be no different, but there's something about remaster I think should be special, for lack of a better term. Technically, games should be no different, but I've got my own headcanon as to what remaster, reboot and remake mean. And I still don't have a good term for, we made it work on modern systems. So this has been a waste of time, really. What do you guys think? Argue with each other in the comments, and I'll be back next time I feel the need to spew my brains.